This is the Pale Lady. She is a portly woman with long black hair, jet black eyes and frighteningly pale skin. The most notorious story about her revolves around a dream that an artist named Lucy Morgan once had. She had planned to visit the village of Kingston, but decided against it after having a bad dream the night before. In the dream she walked up a curved staircase and entered a dark bedroom. The floor was made up of trapdoor style tiles and the windows were nailed shut. Lucy went to sleep in her dream and awoke to see the pale lady leaning over her. She whispered, This is an evil place. Flee while you can. Lucy woke up and decided that maybe visiting Kingston was a bad idea. She instead visited Dorset after a recommendation from a landlady. When she arrived at a guest house, she noticed the same staircase, floor tiles and windows as she seen in her dream. The owner of the guest house later brought up some tea. When Lucy opened the door to greet her, she realised it wasn't the landlady at all. It was the pale lady. Let's talk about another one of the most interesting and disturbing individuals in human history. Robert Liston, the deadliest surgeon of all time. Robert Liston was a surgeon born in Scotland in the late 1700s, famous for his incredibly fast operating speeds. To give you an idea of just how quick this guy was, he was reportedly known as the fastest knife in the West End and could amputate a leg in under two and a half minutes. And believe it or not, at that point in time, speed was a really important skill for a surgeon to have. Because modern anesthetics didn't exist, the less time you spent in your surgery, the less time you'd spend in agonizing pain. Unfortunately, this also meant that surgeons were more prone to fatal accidents. Now, Robert Liston was actually so good at his craft that he had kind of become a minor celebrity and people would actually pay to see him perform his surgeries. During one of these public operations, Liston challenged the audience to time him before getting to work. Over the course of the next 28 seconds, Liston successfully removed the leg of his patient. Unfortunately, he also amputated two of his assistant's fingers in the process and also cut the coat of a nearby witness. Both the patient and the assistant died of sepsis shortly after the operation, and although the witness actually hadn't been hurt by the swipe, he thought that he had and therefore went into shock and died soon after as well. So to recap, in the course of trying to save one man, Liston actually killed three, giving him a fatality rating during that surgery of 300%, making it the deadliest surgical operation in history. This baby cried every time it was near his older sister, but the reason why will shock you. Tyler was a two-month-old baby who couldn't be happier, he was always laughing and smiling. But every time his older sister Megan held him in her arms, he began to cry as if he was trying to get away from her. Megan loved her little brother, but she felt like he wanted nothing to do with her. A few months passed, and nothing had changed. Megan would cry every day about it. Her parents had no idea what to do, but one day they finally had enough. Her mom grabbed him and raced to the doctor to find out what was wrong with him. But to their surprise, at the doctor, Tyler didn't cry one bit. It was as if his entire personality had changed just from being away from Megan. Disappointed, the parents went home and spent many restless nights just thinking about what exactly is going on. But one night, they were awoken to the sound of Megan screaming from her bedroom. So they immediately rushed over to see what was going on. But when they took one look at the floor, they immediately called 911. Hit the plus for part 2. This baby cried every time it was near his older sister, but the reason why will shock you. Part 2. They rushed in to find Tyler on the ground and not moving. So they immediately called 911 and he was rushed to the hospital. The doctors performed a series of extensive tests to find out what was wrong with Tyler because he wasn't moving. But only a few hours later, they made a shocking discovery and broke down in tears finding out the truth. Before he could that there was absolutely nothing wrong with Tyler. You see, the real reason why he was crying was because his sister had a brain tumor. Somehow Tyler had sensed it and he was trying to let her know while he was around her. Luckily, they were able to remove the tumor and Megan survived. This story tells of a mother who always donates her blood through a machine. Years passed, now the child has grown up, and the mother is old. One day, the old mother gave a box to her son. He left a message that the box would tell the true story of her sacrifice over the years. The son then received the box his mother gave him. Now the mother died peacefully in her bed. His mother was buried, and he could only look down sadly, because now he was living alone. When he opened the gift box his mother gave him, he was surprised to find several photos showing a child born with two heads. It turned out that the boy in the photo was him. His gaze fell on his mother's blood donation machine. With a trembling body, he tried to find out the secret inside the machine. 
And sure enough, there is his twin sister in it, who has been living by drinking their mother's blood for years. Now, the man continues his mother's struggle by giving blood to his twin sisters every day. Creepiest things found on the deep or dark web part 1. Just a disclaimer, these are experiences shared on websites such as Reddit about what people have experienced and seen on the dark or deep web. I have never been on either so I would not know what's on there. So we have the normal web which is what we all use, then we have the deep web and then we have the dark web which only 6% of users access. So one day a group of college students were bored and decided to go onto the deep web. The most disturbing thing they found was a website giving a comprehensive guide on how to cook a woman. This page talked about what specific body types to use for specific cuts and how to prepare and cook a girl. If you guys have any stories, feel free to DM me on Instagram because I love seeing people's experiences. Thank you. Creepiest things found on the deep or dark web part 2. Another disclaimer, these are just stories that I've got from Reddit and I don't actually, I've never been on the dark web so I would not know what's there. Also another disclaimer, these are kind of disturbing so listen at your own will. So a person was on the dark web and they remembered finding a disturbing site. This site was dedicated to women who had stillborns but could not deal with the fact that their babies were stillborn. So what it included were ladies putting up pictures of their babies who were dead. And they dress them up and basically act like they were alive. It was really sad and disturbing and there was creepy music playing that made it a whole lot worse. A lot of people have been asking me to do the Candyman. To be honest, I don't know if y'all mean the Candyman Killer or if there's another Candyman that you want me to talk about. But today we're going to talk about the Candyman Killer. Dean Arnold Coral, also known as the Candyman Killer, kidnapped, tortured, and murdered at least 28 people. His first victim was a young man who he picked up hitchhiking. In 1970, Dean picked up a young man named Jeffrey Conan when he was hitchhiking, gave him some candy when he drove Jeffrey back to his home. When they arrived at their destination, Dean hit Jeffrey over the head, knocking him unconscious. It's said that he repeatedly tortured Jeffrey and took advantage of him before finally ending his life. During this murder, somebody actually walked in on Dean. A young man named David Owen Brooks walked in on Dean committing this crime. Dean bribed to keep him quiet by buying him a brand new Chevrolet Corvette, and he'd go on to kill 27 more people. This is why you should never take walks alone at night. In 2007, a girl was on a late night walk when she looked at the end of the road and saw the silhouette of a man moving around very strangely. It was like he was doing the waltz, but he was moving towards her. So she was sketched out, crossed the road, and went the other way. After a couple minutes, she turned around to see what he was doing, and he was right across the street from her, now staring up into the sky with a huge grin on his face. Now totally creeped out, she turns around and walks about a half block before checking again, and to her horror, he's now crouched down right behind her. But luckily, he stands up, turns around, and kind of hobbles away. And then she notices something. The man had turned around and was now sprinting directly towards her. She runs to safety and now just hopes she never has to see that smiling man again. This is why you should always breathe through your nose. In 2009, a Russian man named Artyom Sidorkin started experiencing intense chest pains to the point where he couldn't even stand up. He tried to ignore it, but when he started coughing up blood, he went to the emergency room. They gave him an x-ray and it revealed a fist-sized tumor growing in his lung. Afterwards, the doctor told Mr. Sidorkin, unfortunately, it looks like cancer. But before they could start removing large chunks of his lung, the doctor needed to do a biopsy to see if it really was cancer. So a terrified Mr. Sidorkin came in a few days later, they performed the biopsy, and the surgeon, as he was looking at the tissue, noticed something. Tucked in the middle of the tissue was a five centimeter long fir tree. Mr. Sidorkin was a botanist and he was a big mouth breather, and at some point while he was working, he managed to inhale a fir tree seed. The doctors told him he didn't have cancer, he had a tree. He was shocked and he said, I had no sense that a tree was growing in my lungs. But more than shocked, he was just happy to be cancer free. Yo, what's up? These are horror movies based off real life events. 
part one. Wes Craven's film Nightmare on Elm Street. The true story starts out in Cambodia when a family escaped the killing fields and their son was suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder when they reached the US and he claimed that when he went to sleep somebody was trying to chase him and kill him. The young man told his parents that if he went to sleep he felt like somebody was going to kill him so he stayed awake for days at a time hoping that he wouldn't fall asleep but his parents ended up giving him sleeping pills which basically just set him on a silver platter waiting for this person to kill him. The boy had finally fallen asleep one night and the parents thought that it was all over but at midnight that night they heard screaming coming from his room and once they got here the boy was already dead. After his death Forensic couldn't even figure out how this boy died but the whole time he was claiming that someone was chasing him in his dream but his parents didn't really believe him. Sound familiar? Let's hope you don't encounter a killer in your dreams. Here's why you need to be careful of who you talk to online. A 16 year old girl was at home with her mom talking to a boy on Snapchat that she had recently met. She received a Snapchat from the boy saying he was right outside their house. This was kind of weird because she didn't know the boy very well at all. She looked out the window anyway and didn't see anyone there so decided to just carry on. Soon after this she got another message from the boy saying I'm in your house period. Absolutely creeped out by this, she ran to her mother and showed her the message. The mother checked every room, every cranny, and locked every door. There was no one there, so they just decided to go back to sleep. But the girl was still frightened, so they both slept in the mom's room. Now when the girl woke up the next morning, she saw her shoes were a little bit crooked. So she bent down to go fix them, and out of the corner of her eye, she saw the boy from Snapchat smiling under her bed. This creepy doll will always find to come back to you, no matter how hard you try to get rid of it. In 2013, a girl received an Elsa doll as her Christmas gift, but it was haunted. The doll had a little necklace that when you press it would make it speak, but after two years, it started speaking in Spanish. Once they had had the doll for six years, they realized they hadn't changed the batteries once, and it would talk even when turned off. So the family said, we're getting rid of this doll, and trashed it. But then two weeks later, they found the doll hiding in a bench back inside their house. Now feeling creeped out, they took the doll, put it in two bags, left it out for the garbage man, and watched him take it away. Then went out to go grab something from the store, and when they got home, the same doll was waiting for them in their backyard. So they took the doll and sent it to a friend in Minnesota and thankfully it hasn't come back since.